Good morning, Drive Radio fans. Uh, Richard Rush here with John Rush behind the camera today. And today we are reviewing the 2014 Toyota 4Runner Limited Trim Package. Uh, this is Toyota's highest level trim package for the 4Runner. Uh, it comes with a lot of standard options on it versus the SR5 and the trail version of it. But come on and jo join us for a little walk around and we'll show you what it looks like. So as we kind of walk around here, we kind of pictured this, or we have reviewed this with the Highlander. The, these headlights are starting to get the more, it's not quite a rough shape, it's a nice smooth shape. It doesn't have the, what do you call those, Dad? The uh... This doesn't have some of the aerodynamic things on it that you see on the RAV4. You don't see the fluting on the mirrors. and. I, part of it, I guess, I would I would think is just you're just pushing a bigger square box down the road, and Toyota probably figured, you know, it is what it is. We're going to do the best we can on mileage, but that's the person buying this probably isn't looking out for mileage as much as they are functionality off road, having the ability to have the third seat in it, which we'll talk about some of that as we go through the review well, today. It is, and, and like you said, it's more. This car is more of a sportier off road version of Toyota's car. Um, it is a different version it's meant to go off-road meant to get dirty um, there is the fluting back here but really the car's not meant to get 20 miles to the gallon 25 miles yeah. to the gallon whereas the highlander is yeah. built to uh, withstand that and be more of a functional car but as you can see the lines are nice up here i will point this out you can't see the rear windshield wiper which is a nice feature uh that that's uh, some all tucked uh, companies up, are starting to all tucked up underneath adopt, here. which is nice because you don't have that look on the back of it and and honestly I, and I, this I, window I, does slide up and down it does that, we'll show that here that, in a second which that, is nice um that, that can be a second. feature or you know like it or love it depends on who you, as an old technician i hate roll up and down windows but hopefully they've gotten much better than they used to be we'll talk about that and, and yeah like you said dad the auto window is kind of a feature if you like it great if you don't then it's, you can. I think it, it's it's not really an added option. I would say don't go for the limited trim package. Go for go for one of the uh, other lower level trim packages. But as you kind of go along, I mean, the black it does look good. You have the limited badging right here on it. It shows shows what it is. But better looking wheels really, on this car. It, it is definitely nice. And one thing we will show right here is that this car does come equipped with the automatic running boards, which yeah. really is a nice feature. However, I would say this that I've had several people in it and with the height of this car the you way it sits them. you don't need them now if you're yeah. going to put a lift which i really think that these four runners look great with a lift on them it just right now i mean when i'm kind of going to step in here you actually bang your you actually bang your shin on you're, it you're, you're kind of you're in an awkward yeah. spot like if you use it you're really high up and if you don't use it you you're just kind of step yeah. over it I agree. So no, I, and i agree really, with rich i would agree with richard on that i had his mom in it last night and we drove and one of her first comments was i just banged my shin getting in because she didn't really notice the step coming down and you know kind of once she got used to it it was okay but you know to richard's point if you shut the door it'll take just a second you'll see the step fold back up actually these are a aftermarket step that was developed years ago i used to have them on one of my trucks Th to richard's point they're nice when you have a lifted vehicle where you really need to step in the height of this car uh you, again you can kind of see where the door sill is at and it you know really it's it's only up off the ground about 12 inches or so maybe 16 inches i don't have a tape measure here but not that high to where you can't just step in and out of the form or so anyways, that's a side note richard i tell you what why don't uh why don't we go take a quick test drive uh we'll do that part of the review then we'll come back and we'll do the interior and finish it up how does that sound sounds great all right fans well we're in the driving portion as we typically start out you can see the rear view camera it doesn't turn when i turn the wheel so as you can see we're, we're turning the wheel it doesn't turn and adjust which j it's just a, a feature which, that's nice which to by have. the way we just reviewed the uh the rogue yesterday not nothing again nothing against toyota but the nissan rogue which was less than thirty thousand dollars gives you the ability to see the path you're actually backing up in exactly. so again toyota step your game up a little bit you've got some competitors that have less less money of a car that have you know different features when it comes to some of those things so just a side note agreed well and as we're driving we, we will make note of this our biggest complaint with the forerunner and and i would say the the most of the time this is going to what's prevent us from purchasing this car not that it will but is the fact that it has no v8 option is this it's honestly it's it's kind of underpowered now it does have a 270 horsepower v6 in it four liter v6 four, four liter but, but it is underpowered. It, it is. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you try and get up to speed, and you're really. I mean, it's struggling to get up. It's a heavy car. It's basically a box going through the. Yeah, it's a. It's wind. a this is a. This is a body-on-frame construction. 
so the vehicle is going to be a little heavier uh, and to Richard's point the four liter engine which by the way they've had in these for a number of years just doesn't have the the oomph if you would in my feeling is again Toyota if you're listening you either need to do a V8 option in this car uh, or uh, put a supercharger on it I know that they've made one for this car in years past uh, aftermarket wise I should say and that'd be something that would definitely be worth worth looking into so yeah my my number one complaint with the forerunner in general so again just talking all of the models is they don't have enough power and in turn I think in our elevation which we notice it a lot more here so some of you that are watching this video that are in a lower elevation state probably not as big of an issue for you but for those of us that are up in the higher elevations we're a mile high here and if you do anything in the mountains it just increases as you go up the hill we lose less and less air or, or there's less and less air as we go up which means there's less and less power into the engine itself uh, the engine just a big air pump more in more air in more air out equals more power uh, we don't have that in this particular vehicle so it does lack power in my opinion uh, again would it keep me from buying it you know, probably not but but here's the reality there's other vehicles in its segment that actually give you a little bit more power um, that, that you know that might be a different choice again not knocking Toyota they build a fantastic vehicle forerunner has had a huge reputation for being a very nice long-lasting vehicle so I'm not knocking it at all is it a vehicle I would buy yes I just wish it had more power especially at our elevation uh, agreed and, and definitely well even someone from the younger generation it's even in this car with the v6 it's hard to get a it's even hard to get 19 20 miles to the gallon which uh, in some of our as some of you know we have a fleet shop as well and some of our fleet vehicles we can even get that in some of our trucks so it, that's the one downside what, for, what have you been averaging in this vehicle I've been averaging 18.5 to 19 okay. So, so right around there but as far as drivability wise goes this car does feel great it's smooth going down the road it's not overly rough however it's not overly smooth but for just under 50,000 what you're gonna get out of this car is pretty is pretty good for, for this segment uh, but like like you said the only complaint that we have is the v8 versus the v6 if they could add a v8 option I think that it would boost their sales or supercharge the v6 and have that as an option definitely exactly. so well with that being said we'll, we'll go ahead and take it out and show you the the back the rear the third seat and we'll show you the interior stay tuned okay drive radio fans we're back after our driving portion hopefully you guys enjoyed that and on our treacherous road that we go down uh, but we're kind of on the back se jokingly section speaking of it. exactly <laughs> uh, we're on the back section of the four owner and the one one of the complaints that we have with this car is it doesn't have an automatic gate so when you pull it up right here if I were to just leave it I have to hold this otherwise it goes back in right. it doesn't have an automatic lift gate now it does once you get past a point but for moms looking to get groceries out or have right. kids in the it's not very practical for that it's not as user friendly as an automatic lift gate is again exactly. you got to look at the vehicle and what it's designed for but it's interesting it's, it seems like Toyota's trying to fill in a couple of different markets here they're trying to reach that higher end luxury buyer this car is what forty seven thousand dollars roughly 000. so forty seven thousand third row seat which we'll talk about how that goes up and down in a minute no offense Toyota and I know you guys watch these and listen put an automatic lift gate on or at least make it optional I think if that's the market you're trying to go to on this full-end limited uh, put a lift gate on it because because Richard show how it goes down now now it's even worse so getting it back down so if you're a shorter if you're a shorter lady you've got to grab the strap you grab the strap here and you can't you're not gonna be able to reach the handle and and you're not gonna be able to pull down so you're gonna have to grab the strap get an either use another hand or get a nice pull and push it down like that so it, and it's not that it's that hard to do but it's just in today's world there's so many other options that have automatic lift gates that Toyota I think you need to put an automatic lift gate well, exactly on. and then we kind of as we go in the back it kind of follows through the back seat now the rear seat the third seat is not what you would ex it's, it's not for a long road trip so we'll, we'll preface that out however you dad you were commenting how to in order to get the seats up and down it's, 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 pretty... it's cumbersome. In fact, I'll, I'm going to show you real quick because actually I did this. So Richard, here, you grab the camera for okay. a second and I'm going to show folks how this works. So first off, you have to come around the side of the car. So keep in mind, you're going to double everything I'm doing to get both seats in the back flipped down. So first thing you have to do is you got to get this out of your way. There's a little lever up here in front and I have to push this seat cushion back down. So if you just saw that, I had to actually pull this lever up put this cushion down and by the way I can't do that on that seat so I'd have to come all the way around the vehicle open the other door and do the exact same thing to get the other seat down so now I'm gonna come around the back again 
again, not a big deal. There's just more steps in doing it. I now pull this lever. That puts the headrest down. I then pull this and it's now gonna fold flat back in. The, the nice thing I do like about it is all of this is nice and flat. This cargo mat, by the way, was actually in here. This would actually fold back mm -hmm. out and fill this all back in so you don't even know there's a third seat. My point is there's a four-step process going around this car to get the rear seats down. Again, Toyota, I think if you're trying to go to the high-end luxury market with this particular car, be almost $50,000. I think that needs to be more automated. I don't know. I'm not an engineer. I'm not the guy designing all of this. I'm just giving you suggestions as to what I think, us reviewing it, and I'm sure you're going to get some feedback. People having to walk around this vehicle two times to get the third row seat down, to me, that's just cumbersome. So again, we, we typically give really, really positive reviews. When we, when we want to be critical about something, you can tell right now, we'll be critical as needed. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't buy this car because of that. Just giving you the note, the things that we notice. That's our job when we review these cars, is to give you the, the feedback that we find. So, exactly. And, and I will say, with the back seat, as we kind of get ready to go in the interior here, the back seat does have enough room for a full size adult. We went from all the way from Boulder to Arvada, and those of you who are familiar in right. Colorado, it has enough room right. to do that. Not a long road trip, but the, the functionality wise, it, it's nice to be able to do that. However, the easeability, ease of use. Is, right. not, is not very high. That's so with exactly that being right. said, let's, let's jump to the inside and we'll continue from there. Okay, fans, we're back and Richard's climbed in the back seat or the middle seat, I guess you would say in this car because there is the third row, which we just saw and we're not going to put Richard in the back of it. But you can see good leg room to Richard's mm -hmm. point. Good leg room, good head room. Uh, this does have the sunroof in it, which you'll see up here, the big indentation, but yet Richard sits far enough back to where that's not a problem, even somebody with a hat. But you always notice with sunroof, something we don't talk much about on the show, any car with a sunroof is gonna have a drop in the headliner to allow that roof to, to tip down and slide back if it's a movable roof. If it's a pop-up moon roof, not as big of a deal, yeah. but that's just something that we should have noted. The one nice thing about this too is these these actually move forward and back, yep, correct? They do. They there's, do. A, there's a little the adjustment right down here. underneath where you can actually move that, so give the person do, back more room. Exactly, and, and then honestly, I mean, I've moved it up quite a bit and I still have I mean, I'm pretty much, I'm. this is as far as it goes forward, and me, I'm not the tallest, but you know, I still have plenty of, I mean, I probably have an, another inch yeah. or so. They did a room. nice job of putting indentations into the back seat. You know, the back of the of the front seat is what I mean to say there, to actually give you nice legroom. So yeah, worked out good. Again, not knocking Toyota for this car, it's just, it's just the way that, you know, just some different things that we're noticing on the car. Let's go to the front here, and we'll climb in here and talk about what's in front here yeah so th this is the like i said the limited uh, limited edition of, of the or the limited trim package of the forerunner so you get all of your standard or all of your tie-in feature standard so you have dual climate control here you have the nav system you have your uh, heat seat heaters seat, seat and coolers it and we'll turn it on and show you once again it does have the toyota intune system which as we have mentioned in the past is one of our absolute favorites it works amazing it works great if you notice this versus the highlander that we did review the it's not quite as large of a touch screen and the but the buttons on the side there's not quite as many of them and so this it's is just, like an older version exactly. of the of their system that's just not quite as good as the other systems at this point exactly but but it noticed on the limited that this and, and this on the sport versions would be a uh, it would be a handle here kind of a grip whereas it's got this this is a wood, limited it's a limited model they put all this this laminate type and I think exactly. it is is yeah, more plastic it but the, anyways that's and okay. it looks like what I mean it just gives it a nicer feel like we mentioned here here's your, your gear selector your the uh, four right. high four low low four low however you wanted to, to do yeah, it yeah now one of the differences too we should know being that this is not the trail version mm -hmm. you're not gonna get all, you know, you, you do get some of the features up here, but you do not get the locking differentials and, and you, all those things. Well, and on the trail, which we, we didn't get a chance to video review it, you can actually turn up and have it cruise up the hills for you, right. and you can choose different terrain settings. So keep, this is, like you said, this is Toyota's version of the higher off-road. So you still get a car, you you can go off-road in it, However, you're not going to get the all the features of the trail, but it's kind of a trade-off. What are you going to do more of this car? Is this going to be a family car for kids, or is this going to be a car designed for uh, off-roading? If it is, I would say recommend and, and, the and trail. And if you want both, if you want to go take the kids off-roading, do some camping, you know that that part of it. It's a very very versatile vehicle. 
although I don't know if I'd buy a limited if you're going to go do a lot of off-roading. I think the trail version would be more of my choice. Uh, but yeah, no, this has been a great vehicle, and as Richard talks, we, we talk a lot about it. Uh, mention our show and what we do on Saturdays and how they can see us there. Yeah, well, we, obviously we have more YouTube videos on there. Ch check them out on our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube.com, type in the search bar, Drive Radio, no spaces. You'll find all of our other videos there, uh, as well as on the sidebar. On Saturdays, we have a show from 10 till 1. It's called Drive Radio. Uh, we, we answer any car question. It, nothing is, is stupid or dumb or anything like that. So if you're, even if you're not in the state, to Colorado, you can go to 560thesource.com, pull up, um, listen live from 10 to 1 Mountain Time, Colorado. L listen, in, in, listen in, and if you have any questions, call in. But love to hear from you. Check out our other reviews. Uh, stay tuned and check us out on Saturdays. Thanks for tuning in.